All right, welcome to Marine Biology Lecture, our first invertebrate groups, sponges and jellies. Our first group will be the phylum periphera, which are the sponges, basic anatomy of sponges. These are organisms that, the one and few only group of animals that have no two tissues, no true tissues, um, they are just composed of cells. Um, the mesohyl is a jelly-like layer between the two layers of cells. Um, the types of cells that these sponges are made up of are called amoebocytes, and these are amoeba-like cells that move throughout the sponge and aid in digestion. And then you have the coanocytes, which are flagellated collar cells that move water through sponge, that move water through the sponge and help filter food particles. If you remember, animals have thought to evolve from uh, coanocyte cells. When you look at the basic anatomy, the ostea are the small pores that allow water to enter the sponge. The osculum is the large pore at the end of the sponge that allows water to exit. Um, as far as the sponge skeleton, it could be made up of spicules, either of a, a silica or a calcium carbonate nature, or it could be made of spongin, which is found in bass sponge. It's a, it's a more flexible uh, um, sponge fibers. Uh, Sponges themselves are sessile as adults. When you're sessile, that means you cannot move, and therefore they are attached to a substrate, so something that's on the bottom of the, the ocean floor. However, remember that at some point during their life cycle, all animals are modal. Um, it would be, because the adults are sessile, it is the larvae, the larvae of the sponge, which is modal. Uh, two basic types of reproduction seen here. You could have asexual reproduction where the sponge would reproduce by budding or sexual reproduction uh, where the sponge is a hermaphrodite and it functions as both sexes. So therefore, it will allow for the exchange of sperm and egg. Um, types of sponges include the, the class calcarea, which are calcium sponges. The skeleton is made up of calcium carbonate spicules. Class hexanol... Hexactinel nelida. At this time, Spanish uh, The class hexactin nelida, uh, these are glass sponges, and the skeleton is made of silica spicules. And the class desmal spongiae, these are bass sponges, and their skeleton is made of flexible spongin fibers. So here you can see typical sponge anatomy. Here you have the coanocytes, or the collared cells. Here are the spicules, which make up the skeleton. You have the osculum, which is the larger opening at the top of the sponge for water to exit. And you have the little small openings, um, which are incurrent pores, called the ostea. And then here's a typical amoebocyte cell, which helps play a role in digestion. There is a picture of sponge spicules. And here we have some different types of sponges, as you will see in lab. All right, our next, oh, our next phylum is phylum cnidaria, which are the jellies, basic anatomy. Uh, cnidarians are cnidaria because they have special cells called uh, nidocytes, which are stinging cells. Um, they have tissue layers that include both the epidermis, which is the outer tissue layer, the gastrodermis, inner tissue layer, and the mesoglia, which is a jelly-like layer between the two tissue layers. Uh, they have a, a nerve net, which is a simple nervous system without a brain. Uh, they have radial symmetry, which is symmetry around a central axis, which means it has no right or left sides, just a top and bottom surface, so a dorsal and ventral surface. And if you look, there is the radial symmetry of a C anemone. Just kidding. Body forms. Uh, the two types of body forms in cnidarians are the medusa and the polyp. The medusa form is the modal form. And that means when you're in the medusa form, as seen over here, which is of the true jellyfish, uh, the mouth and the tentacles face down. In the polyp form, which is typical of a sea anemone, uh, that is a sessile form, so that means it's not modal, and the mouth and the tentacles face up. You could also see this in hydra. If you look, uh, remember that the cnidarians 
uh, both have a sessile and a polyp form. So the cnidarian life cycle, this is the hydro hydrozoan life cycle. Here you can see the polyp form, and then eventually you see the medusa form over here. And then in sexual reproduction after meiosis, you have the exchange of sperm and egg, and then fertilization, and then you have the, here you can see the, the larva, the planula larva, and that planula larva is modal. So that would eventually move around, and you can see the cilia there, and would find its place onto a substrate, and then eventually the polyp would start to grow, which would be the adult hydra. Here you can see the type of asexual reproduction occurring here in the hydra. That would be budding. So sexual reproduction, uh, sexual uh, complex life cycle of both polyp and medusa stages, and the asexual reproduction is the budding and fission stage. So our classes of cnidarians. So in the, in the phylum cnidaria, you have the class anthozoa, which includes the sea anemones and corals. You have the class Scyphozoa, which are the true jellyfish. So these are the jellies. And there you could see a, a wonderful representation of the Medusa stages. You have the class Hydrozoa, which are hydroids and hydroid-like animals. Um, this would be key representatives in their adult life as a polyp stage, where the tentacles and mouth are upward. You have uh, class Cubozoa. These are the box jelly and sea wasps. Um, often when you think of the ocean, people get frightened by shark attacks and um, some of the bigger fishes in the sea worried about uh, getting bit by them. But these are some of the uh, more poisonous, venomous creatures of the sea, these box jellies. And uh, they live in the more tropical waters. Um, and in Australia and Hawaii, where you could have box jelly blooms, uh, swarms of swarm, a jellyfish swarm, of box jellies, uh, basically you, you look at water temperature and mood lighting and conditions and at the beaches they usually put netting up because they're very tiny. Some box jellies could be about the size of your your pinky thumb, uh, pinky nail on your finger and and if you get uh, stung by a box jelly you could die within minutes. If you ever saw the movie um, seven, seven Pounds I think it is with Will Smith at the end there he kills himself by dumping uh, box jellies into the bathtub. Our last phylum in this group would be the phylum Tinafora. These are comb jellies. These are some really cool organisms. Uh, they share many of the same characteristics found in cnidarians with the following exceptions. Comb jellies have rows of cilia that are used for locomotion. Um, they do not have nidocytes or those stinging cells and they have coloblasts which are cells that are used to capture their prey by squirting glue on them. So the coloblast is how comb jellies uh, capture their prey. It's the nidal sites in the true jellies. That's how they capture their prey. So that nidal site would shoot out and kind of harpoon the organism and, and inject its venom into the organism to paralyze it. Uh, really cool about tenophores or comb jellies is that they can bioluminesce. And you could see uh, in both pictures here, you have two classes of, of comb jellies. You have class nuda, which are the comb jellies without tentacles, and you have a class tentu tentaculata, which are comb jellies with tentacles. And that's all for our sponges and jellies.